Hello everyone, welcome back to Combat Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. Now that we have learnt about the different reservoirs of infection, that can be a human reservoir, an animal reservoir or even non-living reservoir. Also, how a reservoir is different from a source, the different types of human reservoirs that can be a case or a carrier, the different types of cases and carriers, etc. I think this is the best time that we move on to the next link in the chain of dynamics of disease transmission that is the modes of transmission. So today shall talk about different modes of transmission of infection. So we can have direct transmission or indirect transmission and under this larger headings there are also different type of modes of transmission. Let us start with the direct transmission. The first one we have is direct contact that can occur from skin to skin, mucosa to mucosa or even mucosa to skin. And this occurs during the activities like touching, kissing or even sexual intercourse. The diseases which are transmitted by direct contact are sexually transmitted diseases including HIV infection or AIDS, leprosy, leptospirosis, different skin and eye infections etc. Next is droplet infection which we are very much aware about. So, direct projection of sprays of droplets of saliva and nasopharyngeal secretion during activities like coughing, sneezing, talking or even spitting. The droplet spread is about uh, 30 to 60 centimeter between the source and host and different infections which is uh, transmitted by droplet infection include mainly respiratory infections including common cold, tuberculosis, diphtheria, etc. But any, any respiratory infections like uh, measles, chickenpox can also be transmitted by droplet infection. Next is contact with soil. So whenever a person comes in contact with soil, there can be direct exposure to the disease agent in the soil. And the best examples are hookworm infestation, tetanus, and mycosis. So tetanus spores can be present in the soil or hookworm ova can be present in the soil. So we get infected by the toxin or even the ova and we get the disease. So these are the examples where the diseases are spread by contact with soil. Then we have inoculation into the skin or mucosa. So inoculated directly into the skin or mucosa like rabies virus by dog bite. So if a dog has rabies virus present in his saliva, whenever the dog bites, the virus is inoculated into the deeper tissue through the bite wound. Also hepatitis B by contaminated needles. Very rarely HIV infections can occur. Also you can see there is a skin, uh, I'm sorry, a snake bite. So this is another example. Next is transplacental or vertical transmission. Certain uh, agents, infectious agents can be transmitted from the mother to the child transplacentally. Examples are syphilis, toxoplasma, rubella virus, cytomegalovirus or CMB, herpes virus and other infections including HIV AIDS, varicella, hepatitis B etc. So this is very common. We know about rubella virus. So there is congenital rubella syndrome. We already learnt about rubella in our uh, previous videos. So this is one of the example of or rather these are the examples of transmercental or vertical transmission. Now coming to the indirect transmission. So far we talked about the direct transmission. Let us talk about the indirect transmission next. Number one is vehicle borne. We have to know what is a vehicle. So transmission of infectious agent through the agency of water, food, raw vegetables, fruit, milk, blood, etc. All these are considered as vehicles. So we consume food, uh, we drink water, we use raw vegetable uh, for cooking or even sometimes uh, as a part of salad. Fruits, we consume fruits uh, and milk 
and sometimes blood are also taken suppose there is any blood transfusion so all these things are considered as vehicle and if the infectious agent is uh, uh, passed to the susceptible host through these vehicles this is known as vehicle borne infection there are some examples so through water when water acts as a vehicle we have acute diarrheal episodes typhoid cholera poliomyelitis uh, hepatitis A, food poisoning, intestinal parasites, etc. And also we have <clears throat> blood as carrier like hepatitis B, malaria, syphilis, brucellosis, trypanosomes, and infectious mononucleosis, CMP, etc. Organ transplantation, cytomegalovirus, like in case of kidney transplant, the virus may be present in the uh, kidney which is being transplanted and it can cause infection in the uh, recipient's body. So these are the examples of vehicle borne infection. Next we have vector borne diseases. So different classifications of vector borne disease. We have classification on the uh, based on the vectors. So vectors can be either vertebrate or invertebrate. Vertebrate vectors include mice and rodents. So any disease which is uh, transmitted by the mice or rodents, they are uh, vector borne disease and the vector is vertebrate vector. Invertebrate vectors, we have different arthropods like flies, mosquitoes, cockroach, ticks, mites, bugs, etc. A uh, lot of rickettsial diseases are there. We know flies uh, transmit the uh, gastrointestinal infections, etc. And we all know about the mosquito borne diseases like malaria, filaria, chikungunya, uh, dengue, we have yellow fever, etc. And another classification is by the transmission chain. So man and non-vertebrate host example is man, mosquito man, so malaria. So malaria parasite is present in uh, infected person. Mosquito takes the blood meal and the parasite goes into the body of the mosquito and then it again injects the parasite into another healthy person. There can be also man, another vertebrate host and non-vertebrate host. Uh, like bird, arthropod, man, in case of encephalitis. We can have man and two intermediate hosts like man, cyclops, fish, in case of fish tapeworm disease. So these are the different examples uh, where uh, we have different population, animal population or human population in transmission chain. Then we can have the method in which vectors transmit the agent. So it can be by either biting or scratching this both of them are possible by methods in which vectors are involved in transmission of parasite mechanical transmission can occur where the vector only carries the causative agent from a reservoir to a host or we can have biological transmission which can be of three different types propagative where the agent merely multiplies so it only multiplies in number but the form is not changed there is not not any developmental change of the parasite in the uh, in the vector example is plague bacilli in rat flea also we can have cyclopropagative where the agent changes in form and number so it multiplies in number also there is developmental changes so it passes through different developmental stages in the vector example is malaria parasite in mosquito we know that whenever a mosquito takes a blood meal from an infected person it it would probably take in the gametocytes the male and female gametocytes so that is one form after that there will be fertilization formation of oocs to kinate and then there will be sporozoite so is it, as we can see there is also multiplication in the number as well as there is changes in the stage so there are different developmental stages we have gametocytes then we have ukinate oocyst etc and then we have sporozoite so this is cyclopropagative and also cyclodevelopmental where the agent undergoes only developmental changes so it passes through different developmental stages but there is no multiplication for example microfilaria in mosquito so these are the different examples and also the different classifications by which we can classify the vector borne diseases the next indirect uh, method of transmission is the airborne which can be droplet nuclei they are formed during coughing or sneezing particle size is 1 to 10 micron and diseases like tb influenza chickenpox measles and many respiratory infections occur so remember droplet nuclei 
and droplet infection are not same droplet infection is uh, it comes under the direct transmission whereas droplet nuclei comes under the uh, indirect transmission we can also have dust some of the larger droplets which are expelled during talking coughing or sneezing settle down by their sheer weight because of the gravitational force on the floor carpets furnitures clothes bedding etc uh, that means the immediate environment and they become a part of the dust and whenever we inhale this dust we also uh, take in the infectious agent so streptococcal and staphylococcal infections hospital acquired infections can occur by dust next is fomite borne fomites are inanimate articles or substances other than water or food contaminated by infectious agents so remember food uh, water these are considered as vehicle borne they are not fomite any other inanimate articles which we use uh, on daily basis they are known as fomites examples are soiled clothes syringes instruments etc so these are uh, uh, examples of fomite borne infection unclean hands and fingers unclean hands and fingers imply lack of personal hygiene of course and lack of personal hygiene coupled with poor sanitation favor person to person transmission of infection an example is the 1984 dysentery epidemic in india so as you can see the hand is unclean also here we have a nail and there, there is barbed wire and a person gets cut from this so these are the examples of homoid borne infections so these are all about the different modes of transmission we have direct mode as well as indirect mode and under direct and indirect mode we have different modes of transmission and uh, you should by now have some clear idea about how infections are spread from a reservoir or a source to a susceptible person with this we come to today's session if you like the video please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your bachelors juniors and friends we also have our facebook page that you can follow the link is given in the description take care and we shall see you in our next video